A320, Mentor Channel. Welcome to the Wind Sustainability Series. This is episode number three, cockpit preparation and before pushback or start. In this video, we will share with you all the actions that the flight crew can take during cockpit preparation and before pushback or start to save fuel and reduce CO2 emissions. Remember, even small initiatives are big when it comes to reducing emissions. First, we will focus on the data insertion in the FMS. Then, we will talk about the use of the pack flow on the low position. Next, we will explain how to select the most appropriate runway and departure to save fuel and reduce CO2 emissions. And, to finish, we will talk about the engine start. First of all, let us focus on the data insertion in the FMS. During cockpit preparation, the flight crew should insert or download the correct data in the FMS init page. The wind and temperature parameters should be inserted as accurately as possible, right from the cockpit preparation. This helps to optimize the FMS predictions. If the flight crew has less time than expected, at least the average wind should be entered. Remember, that the more accurate the data is, the better the predictions will be. Good predictions help to reduce fuel consumptions and emissions, as the FMS will compute the optimum flight level based on this data. The optimum flight level computation will be explained in the video episode 6 of this wind series, dedicated to the cruise phase. The acceleration altitude and stress reduction altitude are entered in the FMS takeoff berth page. If the condition and the regulation permit, the stress reduction altitude and acceleration altitude should be reduced to a minimum of 400 feet. More details and explanations about the stress reduction altitude and the acceleration altitude will be provided in the video number 5 of the series, dedicated to the climb phase. The second way we would like to talk about to save fuel and reduce the emissions is to consider the number of passengers on board. If the aircraft is not full, the flight crew should reduce the airflow in the cabin. The SOP will request the selection of pack flow to low when the number of passengers on board is below a certain value. Here is an example on an A320 family aircraft. Today, there are 132 people on board. The flight crew can therefore set the pack flow to low. This can save up to 0.5% of fuel for the entire flight. For example, on a 1 hour and 10 minute flight from Toulouse to Paris Orly, on an A320, the CO2 emissions will be reduced by 45 kilograms. Keep in mind that limited savings in every flight become major savings when applied to the entire fleet on a yearly basis. Third point, selecting the runway can also save fuel and reduce CO2 emissions. Let's see for example this situation. Today's flight is from toulouse blagnac to paris charles de There is light wind from the southeast reported by the ATIS. Runway news is 1-4 right for departure. The aircraft is at gate ECHO 30. The expected departure to the north is FISTO 5 Alpha. However, if the flight crew requests to take off from runway 3-2 right and use the FISTO 5 PAPA departure, this can save both taxi time and flight time. In our example, the reduced taxi time and reduced cruise time 
save 250 kg of fuel and 790 kg of CO2. As you are aware, taking off from the opposite runway is not possible in all situations. But every time it is possible, this will reduce the fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. Last but not least, the flight crew should delay the engine start as long as possible to reduce the engine running time. For example, on the S320 family, saving 10 minutes of taxi can reduce the fuel consumption by 100 kg. That is to say, it will reduce the CO2 emissions by 315 kg. To conclude, during the cockpit preparation and before pushback or start, fuel savings and reduction of CO2 emissions are possible. To have the best aircraft efficiency, you should insert the most precise data in the FMS, use pack flow on the low position, depending on the number of people on board, select the most appropriate runway, reduce the stress reduction altitude and acceleration altitude as much as possible, and finally, delay the engine start. All the savings that can be achieved during this phase appear to be small, but the sum of those savings sets the path to the best aircraft efficiency, fuel savings, and the reduction of CO2 emissions. Thank you for watching this episode of the Wind Sustainability Series. Stay tuned for more on how to reduce fuel consumption and CO2 emissions during the other phases of the flight. A320 Mentor Channel